I should speak, should I? Can you hear me? Yay. Hi. Yes. You can hear me. Yes. Is it clear or is there something weird about it? Is it, is it good? Now we can hear you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. I'd have just done, if I hadn't looked, I'd have just done half an hour. Right, let's get on with it. We've run out of time. Valuable time. Straight to the questions. Paige, how do you decide on your characters' names? Do you think men called David Brent have a hard time living up to the legend? Um, yeah, it's not good, is it, to be suddenly your name is associated with something bad. Um, I talked about this in one of my stand-ups that I imagine in the 50s, the name Adolf was <laughs> died out pretty quickly. <laughs> um, how do I think? I don't know. They sort of come to you. Sometimes, I don't use this as much now, but I used to be fascinated with sort of um, names. Like I'd over, I think I overheard some people talking about their friend Chris Finch. <clears throat> and I thought that was a funny name. Not a funny name, but because it was sort of, you know, real. I didn't know the guy, but I thought it worked. Chris Finch, it just sort of works. And, it, and you imagine who that guy, who's that guy like that they're talking about? Um, so I've done that a couple of times. David Brent just came to me and I wanted it very simple. And I wanted it, I wanted it like Chris Finch. Hi, David Brent. Like it's cool and confident, but then he's like he is. Uh, um, Andy Millman. I wanted something very ordinary. And Millman was a street in Reading growing up where we used to change buses for the dentist when I was a kid. So uh, I remember that, I suppose. Uh, so it depends. What I don't do is, I don't do comedy names because I, I sort of deal in realism. So I don't, I don't call people Lucinda Cumbucket to get a laugh. I like ordinary names. Also, there's a clearance thing that if you're if you're doing, you know, uh, m making someone like like Kev in uh, Derek a pervert, and you know you find someone with that name Kev Twine, and there's only one, you can't use it. So it's either got to have no, either the name mustn't exist, or there's got to be a thousand. So someone can't say. He's having a go at me, if you know what I mean. So there, there you know, there's other restrictions. Derek, uh, I remember um, someone uh, I worked with saying Derek was a funny name, and it made me laugh that this person just chose a name they thought was a weird name. And I remember it was there was we Derek Griffiths of Play School, and he said Derek, such a weird name, and I found that funny. I must have remembered that like years later. Uh, and Derek Noakes, I just thought, oh, Derek Griffiths from Play School, Noakes, John Noakes from Blue Peter, so I put them together to make an ordinary sort of... Uh, so it comes from anything. But what I don't like doing is, is drawing attention to it. I like ordinary names that could be every... You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call a character Beyonce or Elvis because it, there's too many connotations, unless I made a feature of it. Like the character said, Elvis? Or there was a story behind it. Um, I, I just, you know, so I, I, want, that, I want nothing to be in a name. Um, or intriguing, who's that guy? Just an ordinary name, but... Uh, good question. Leopold and Loveday. The world is full of surprises. What's the biggest surprise you've ever gotten? Thanks for all you do. Uh, I don't like surprises. I've told Jane. It was, it's not on anymore, but... You know, this is your life. I told her that if they ever um, tell her that they're going to do me, that she's got to say, I've got to tell him and we're going to blow it because I didn't want to do it. I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't know would like it. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, Golden Globes, winning the Golden Globes the first time. It's crazy. Never thought we had a chance. A little show on BBC America. 
They said you've been nominated for two Golden Globes. No one thought you had a chance. I didn't even bother remembering what to say. I couldn't remember the Hollywood Foreign Press. I, when I got up there, I was just, it was, it was, it was mind blowing. Um, and we went, I nearly didn't go because I put in a, I put in a, a pencil to gig, a warm up, the first warm up for politics. It was like 2003, I think, and it was in January. And I said, oh, I've got to do this gig. I hadn't even put tickets on sale, so I didn't have to do it. But everyone went, you're mad. Golden Globes, you, you might win. And we're not going to win. Uh, we went out the day before, which was mental. 12 hours on a plane. Uh, I, had a, I bought a cheap tuxedo. I was asked on the red carpet. Someone said, who are you wearing? I went, what? Whose suit is that? I went, mine. Jane went, no, who makes it? And I looked, and it was Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> so what does that mean to someone on the red carpet? You know, like, oh, Marks and Spencer's, that's cool. Um, go in there, right? It was like half two. I'd, you know, I'd had that flight before, got on a two, put on a tuxedo. Got in the limo. I was starving. So on the way to the red carpet, like, we stopped in this limo in a garage and I got this big bag of Cheetos, which are like cheesy Wotsits. And so I was just eating them on the way to the red carpet. And we pulled up to the red carpet to get out. And Jane went, look at your mouth and hands. That was just orange, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was putting my hands in the ice bucket in the limo. And I was doing my mouth, right? And, uh... Yeah, they had to do the red carpet. And then we won. Mental. Mental. Um, Andy. Andy the dog. Hi, boss. Scarlet the beagle is my valentine. <laughs> Can you make up a nice poem for her? What, from you, Andy? So I've got to make up... So I've got to make up a poem for a dog from another dog. Um, dear Scarlet, this poem is coming from Andy. He's a dog and he loves you, which could come in handy. <laughs> oh dear. Um, hold on, this is oh, another one. This is, oh, Gunner, this is Gunner. Hi boss, my girlfriend is Pippi. Can you make up a nice poem for her? You're having a laugh there, Gunner. Dear Pippi, I think you should go out with Gunner to run round the woods. It couldn't be funner. Right. That's the last poem I'm going to do to a dog from a dog. Or any other animal, okay? <laughs> Oh, this is my life now. This is my life now. Right. Tilly. If all religions... I, I don't know if Tilly is... I, I think Tilly might be a human. I don't know, though. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> if all religions were proven, and you could hand-select different elements from all of them, to create a new religion, what would you pick and why? Pagans are magical creatures, hint, hint. Pagans, yeah. I've been watching a lot of Vikings lately. We finished all episodes of Vikings. We watched two a night for like, I don't know, two months. Loved it. Great. I mean, I mean, I don't know who directed some of them, but some of them were like, you know, proper art. Amazing. I could have done without the blood eagles. I don't even want to describe what it is, but it happened a few times and it was horrible. But I, I reckon, I reckon I would, the problem is, if, if, so what you mean is all religions were pr proven, they're true. Everything, that, everything all religions say is true, right? What would I choose? The problem with that is the Christian religion, for one, you know, says it's the only one. So that would say all the others are wrong. So I'm taking monotheism out of it. 
I'm taking that out of it. Because <laughs> they ruin it for everyone. So, all the others. So, uh, I could be a Hindu reincarnated, Buddhism, Enlightenment. I think I would choose Norse. I would choose Norse. I, I, like, I like the attitude. I like the fact that Valhalla, and I'm learning all this from the programme Vikings. But it's all made up anyway, isn't it? What am I saying? I'm learning it. It's all made up. So, if it was true, uh, Valhalla, they fight each other all day in Valhalla, kill each other, and then <laughs> have a drink with each other. Now that... <laughs> that's better than floating around being all holy, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I think I'd just choose... I just choose the Norse, but Thor, Big Hammer. All right, lad, what are you do with that? S fucking smash shit up. Good on you. Good on you. Um, I would, I would have gone. I would have gone probably with the Christian God, but he changed his mind. He was good in the Old Testament. He's like fucking you, fucking you, and then he was all like, oh, don't worry about it. I forgive you. So, um. Stick with Thor. I go with Norse. <laughs> <laughs> um, Titch. I won't go with any of them, obviously. But you know what I mean. Titch. Titch is a dog. I have a new Borley, which I have already destroyed. And this jellyfish. I would like to know... For the show Afterlife, did you employ a location scout? Yeah, location manager, yeah. Uh, and was it an actual office you filmed in? No. Uh, we do, you have a location manager. They do all that. They, you say what you want, where you want it. And they look for it, the perfect things. And, you know, uh, and you want to find things in sort of like the same area. So you don't have to move too much. Some of you can't do that when you like go to the beach or something. But, um... It would be, you know, it's good to create a world, but some do have to, you have to mix and match and make it look like it's the same place, but you can't get everything in the same place. Um, and the office, uh, the outside of it is a real office block, but obviously that looked great, but we couldn't film in there because there's a real office going on. So we built the office in a studio and that can happen quite a few times. The, the external of the building can be great, but the internal can be wrong or you're not allowed in there or something uh, so you often have to do a bit of fakery uh, good question that I save that for my podcast when I talk about stuff like that Leslie hi Ricky congratulations on your recent awards for Afterlife thank you it really is the gift that keeps on giving one of your characters from Afterlife wins a Valentine's date with a famous person. Who would you pair up and where would they go? Ah, oh, it's got to be Brian Gittins, hasn't it? It's got to be Brian Gittins. <laughs> with someone quite sophisticated. But, um, the Brian Gittins gets a date. Who with? Who could he do? Um, uh, someone like Joanna Lumley. <laughs> uh, oh, I might just do that for the sake of it. Good question. Where do they go? Just a posh restaurant. <laughs> Leslie, uh, oh, I've done that one. Um, Stove. If you could live one dream and dream one live moment instead of living it, what would they be? Uh, also, I was that masterclass podcast coming. I'm thinking about it. Um, so I could dream, uh, live one dream. Well, live one dream would be me flying, wouldn't it? I told you, it's just the, the ultimate for me. Just whizzing around. Proper flight as well. Proper take off. Not hovering around six feet off the floor like a fucking daddy long legs bouncing off shit. I want proper off. Like that. I don't have to go fast. 30 miles an hour. Tops up. 30 miles an hour. 
Uh, you know what I mean? Get to get to Marlow. Twenty five minutes. Um, no traffic. Just whew, uh, oh yeah, but it's got to be proper. So teenagers can't punch you as you fly past. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I dreamed that dream, just me flying around. That would be great. And wish I'd dream some. Sorry, I wish I'd dream some of that horrible was happened. So, I mean, if you don't count sort of personal tragedy, like one of your family dying and they didn't, but they they will eventually. Uh, what do I wish? Uh, do I, um. Something interminable. What did I go to? So, uh, probably an award show. <laughs> Which I only just dreamt that. Didn't have to be there. <laughs> Three hours without a drink. Um, flight. would be great, wouldn't it? I'd miss it, wouldn't I? I'll be 90 and there'd be a thing on the news. Just kids whizzing round. That, that big Christmas gift is just a, a vest you put on. And you, <sighs> you love it for fuck's sake. They go, you can't do it. Why? Because you're brittle. You're disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a G-force of one. And you just, just leave your hips behind. Like, I'd just be floating around with my legs just broken like that. Like a fucking... Like a daddy long legs. Like that. And I'd just be going, oh, my fucking... My fucking legs! <laughs> just fucking gunch. And... <laughs> Uh, uh, I made up a word for what my insides and blood would be like. Gunch. Just, it's like a mixture of dust and juice. Just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Um, Dougal. Bonjour, Monsieur Ricky. It's French bulldog. It's 2035. Here we go. You are in your bucket, and we are coming out of lockdown 43. Oh, that's another 35. So, was that 50, 14 years? I'm early 70s. No, fucking hell. How would you spend your day? I'm in the bucket. I'm in the bucket. I'm 73 or 4. I'm in the bucket. Like that. Like that. How would you spend your day? Sat. Staring into space, waiting for the Wii to warm up. <laughs> uh, B, sat on the heath telling passers-by how you used to be a contender. That one. That one. I'm in a bucket on the heath. Uh, I'm looking past my monolith. I'm in my office. I go, what? Office. I go, you, you want to go to the office? No, you can't. I was in the office. No, Steve Carell was in the office. Fuck off. That one. <laughs> Fucking hell, I need a wee now. What is the point of this? Uh, Tiana. What was it like meeting Gordon Ramsay and being the one to give him crap for once? I met him a few times. I assume you mean in extras when, uh, when Andy Millman is arguing with him uh, in the Ivy. Um, good. Shot it in one day. It's funny. It's good to, to, to just insult each other. And rightly, I love writing insults for me. Like, that's funny. And I got a few in for him. Pound puppy faced something, I think I called him. <laughs> it was good. It was funny. And he was perfect for it because he had that attitude. He was, I mean, he's big now, but he was massive at the time. And he was famous for swearing and shouting people out and insulting people. Um, so it was, it was, it was perfect. For that, for that year, he was the perfect person for Andy Millman to have a shouting match with. Um, Joey, 
do you think animals can be narcissistic or is it exclusively human? Well, I think in the real sense, it's exclusively human. Um, but, I mean, they can care about themselves in a sense. They've just got instinct. They've got to do what they've got to do. They've got to find food, shelter, mate, and, you know, that's it. Uh, cats spring to mind. But you wouldn't say, you wouldn't say a snake's narcissistic because it's not thinking, is it? It hasn't got, it's not going, should I be kind to that mouse or not? It's just, it's just pure instinct. So I don't think, I don't think it really counts. If cats, if cats could think, <laughs> it's a cat that's hard to join. If cats could think, they'd be narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, I think that, as it stands, by definition, is exclusively human. From what it means, what the word actually means. Yeah. Rosie, out of all your work, who would you say was the hardest character to develop and why? How did you overcome the challenge? Uh, Derek springs to mind just because it was already getting flack before anyone saw it. They were making assumptions about it. Um, but in a way, that makes you go, well, I better be, I'll show them, you know? So that's a good, so it's quite a good pressure. Uh, well, I don't know, I don't know if that's true. I don't think any pressure that isn't to do with the art is a good pressure. I don't think you should have to worry about whether it goes down or people to take it the wrong way. Because, yeah, I don't think that is a good pressure. But anyway, um... I just did it by, I just did it by doing my own thing and trying to, you've got to assume that for everyone who hates it, it'll be some people's favourite show. And that's all I've ever done. That's all I did before I knew. Like David Brent, David Brent was a joy because I had no expectations. No one knew who I was. And it was fun to do. It was easy to develop because I knew it. I'd say if you take out the expectation and being famous or not, um, Derek and Brent were the easiest to do because they were sort of comedy characters and I knew them well. Whereas harder ones are probably Tony Johnson and Andy Melman to make them interesting. Tony Johnson's got a thing and he can say what he wants, so that's sort of done. Um, but even that, for him to say the terrible things he does, I have to keep reminding people how much he loved his wife and what a nice bloke he was to keep it sort of balanced. If he had no tragedy in his life, you'd hate him. You'd go, what the fuck's he on? Why is he, you know what I mean? Um, and with Andy Millman, I remember, uh, I'd always wanted to do a wisecracker. Um, but the first sort of draft of him, uh, I was worried people wouldn't care because he, he had no foibles. If he didn't care about his lot, he was just getting on with it, yeah, whatever. I mean, that's good in real life, but not good to watch. So, um, you know, he needed a foible. And, and his was, he was, he was unhappy about being sort of overlooked. Uh, so that's how, that's what made him interesting. That he, he, if he didn't care about anything, then nor would we. So that's why he had to be on the back foot with directors and sort of, eat humble pie with like producers and stuff. So he wasn't just a wisecracker going through not caring about anything. Um, so uh, probably that, probably Andy Millman. Uh, good question. Julia, once my brother was driving us on the motorway when our tire had a blowout. That's scary, isn't it? The car span facing oncoming traffic, then luckily back round to the hard shoulder. During that spin, it felt like we were going in slow motion. Why? Uh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? it? It sort of does, but it sort of doesn't. Because what it is, it's not that at the time 
it seems slow. It's that your memory doing a quick feedback. So, uh, I was blessed to explain it. So if, if you're walking down the street, you're just walking down the street, right? You're seeing hundreds of people, street signs, noises, but your brain doesn't, they, they're not important. You don't remember those faces. You don't, if, if you took any one second of that, you, you wouldn't remember it. But if a car suddenly speeds towards you on the pavement, your brain goes, concentrate. Everything is important. So you see the car, you see the person in the car look at you, you hear the noise, and it all happens in half a second. But then your short-term memory feeds that, feeds that back to you. And because you've got more to take in, it seems like one second. So it seems like it went slower. Does that make sense? You crammed in more information in your memory. So it's, so your brain goes, that must have been going slower to f all fit into the same time. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense, does it? The brain doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's what I think anyway. Uh, last question. We've done well here, haven't we? I need a wee. If you had to choose one of the following Valentine tweets, this is from Bella, Bella the Bedlington Whippet. Sorry, I couldn't get to your question. We ran out of time. It's half an hour, and I know I wasted time with the fucking phone. <laughs> oh, fucking phone calling, you twat. If you had to choose one of the following Valentine treats to give Jane this year, what would you choose? One, a lap round the garden with a squirrel who likes being chased. Yeah. <laughs> so Jane gets to do that. Well, she, she liked that so far, definitely. Extra nose boobs and hair scruffles, but I don't think I don't think she'd appreciate that one so much. Hide pieces of cheese around the house for her to find. No, she no. Throw her a really good stick for her to carry around all day. Well, I think she'd appreciate it, but I think without doubt, knowing Jane, she would love if I could get. Literally, if I could give her a gift of running around a garden with a squirrel that liked it, that wouldn't just be the best out of those four. That would be like the best gift she'd ever had. So I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Bella. Um, <laughs> what a load of bollocks that was. Sorry about the, uh, the terrible start. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, have a lovely Sunday. <laughs> See you Wednesday for a few more till March. It's finished. We'll see. Tati bye, everyone. Be nice to animals. <laughs>